fellow Toastmaster. Madam Toastmaster. Behold the whistling river. Quite a sound, huh? But the whistling river wasn't just loud. <laughs> the whistling river was big. The ornery, the orneriest river in the whole U.S. of A. he was. How ornery was he? Twice a day he would do that, and he would rise up some 200 feet in the air. 200 feet in the air! And he'd blow loggers out of the way, onto the bank. He blows some of them back into the water. And then he'd even mess up some of the log stuff that they were trying to tie together and get down river. Well, he was a mean, mean river. I'll tell you, that whistling river. And Paul Bunyan, even though he was hanging around the logging camp, he didn't mind that at all. No big deal to him. But one day Paul was sitting up on a hill and he was brushing his beard, making himself look all purdy. And he used a pine tree, of course, as he did that. Giants, you gotta have a pine tree. You gotta use something that's handy. He was doing that, minding his own business, and all of a sudden that mean old river went <laughs> right his direction. 400 gallons of muddy water right in Paul's beer. Paul, <laughs> oh, all right, well, was he gonna do anything about it? Nah. Yeah, he thought he'd shrug it off, thought he'd ignore that old mean river. But then the river went one step further, stuck it right in his eye. 5,000 gallons of muddy, icky water. We're talking fish, we're talking turtles, we're talking muskrat here, all in Paul Bunyan's beard. Paul let out a yell. It could be heard all the way out to Pike's Peak. Matter of fact, it caused a bit of a landslide out there. That's how loud that shout was. And Paul declared, he said, you know something? I'm going to do something about that whistling river, or I'm going to bust the gut trying. So Paul did what most guys do. He started thinking up a plan. And while he's thinking up a plan, he's doing some snacking. And he's snacking on popcorn. Not one day, not two days. Not three days, but four days of eating popcorn. And you know when you eat popcorn, some stuff falls. Paul's chewing away on popcorn, and all this white stuff is flying around. Sooner or later, it's 18 inches thick of this white stuff. An area of three miles wide. It was so thick, all the birds and animals in that area thought it was a blizzard, so they froze. <laughs> which was a bad thing for them, but a good thing for the guys at the logging camp because, you know, they didn't have to go out and do any hunting. They had pot pies for days to come. It was a good thing. But after Paul did all that eating, he figured it out. I'm going to do something about that river. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to straighten that thing out. I'm going to get the kinks out of that damn thing, and let's go. So he and Babe the Blue Ox went for a little short stroll. And where do giants go for a short stroll? Of course, they go to the North Pole. And when he got to the North Pole, he set a trap right on the blizzard trail. So he's going to catch him a blizzard or two, right? And while that's happening, he and Babe the Blue Ox, they go on over and uh, play a little game of fetch. Pick up an iceberg, toss it into the ocean. <laughs> Babe the Blue Ox goes in, bounces around, gets the iceberg, comes back. It was all well and good. Problem is, though, Paul started hearing reports of the waves, the tidal wave that was being created by that blue ox. It was actually swamping some low parts of Florida. So he had to stop doing that right away. Meantime, he went back to check out that blizzard trap. You know, we were trying to catch a blizzard. Well, wouldn't you know it? We got six young blizzards in that trap and also a nor'wester. How about that? That's great. Tell you what. Paul decided he was going to let all those blizzards go, except for two, stuck him in his gunny sack, and marched on back to the logging camp. And as he got into the logging camp, he saw Ole. He said, Ole, I need you to fix me up the biggest logging chain you ever done. 
and Oli said, oh, yeah, okay, Paul. Yeah, that's no problem. We can take care of that. You know, Oli was a Swede, you know. So in case you hadn't figured that out. So while that was happening, remember, we got the blizzards here. Paul stuck a blizzard on this side of the river, stuck a blizzard over on this side of the river, and by next morning, some 17 miles of river was freezing up. That whistling river, it could barely whistle. It could barely rise. And Ole is done with that chain. So Paul could take that chain and wrap it, and wrap it, and wrap it right around that frozen river. He had a firm grip on that thing, and he hitched it up to Babe the Blue Ox and said, Paul, Paul. And Babe was struggling, and Paul said, Hey, I'll help you out here. Got on the front end, started pulling and pulling, and didn't take him long. Didn't take him long before they had that thing straight as a shotgun. They got all the kinks out of that thing. And matter of fact, they were moving so fast. They were moving so fast against that Audrey River that they were slogan. That's right. amazing thing. And they had so much extra river left that Paul had to get out his big saw and start cutting off certain parts and wrapping some up in bundles, saving some for later. And of course he did save a section or two when he went out and went logging in the desert. But that's another story for another day. And that's how Paul Bunyan tamed the Whistler River. Battle Toast.